with the $54 million Arrive Can app that is now under police investigation. And then I'd get rid of the $35 billion infrastructure bank that pays bonuses but hasn't completed a single infrastructure project, Mr. Speaker. And why don't we throw in the $100 million plus contracts to McKinsey, a company that helped cause the opioid crisis. But speaking of all the waste that he forces on Canadian taxpayers, when it comes to the Arrive Can app, which is now under police investigation, he covered up a previous uh, uh, bad, bad behavior under SNC Lavalin. Will he at least cooperate with the RCMP investigation into the Arrive Can app? After eight long years of this prime minister, he's not worth the cost, and especially in Quebec, where the inflation rate has hit 4.8 percent, higher than elsewhere in Canada. After eight years of inflationary deficits, the solution proposed by the Liberals and the Bloc is to significantly increase costs through a tax on gas and diesel that will increase the cost of every product that's transported. Will they put an end to these inflationary policies so that Quebecers can buy food and gas and housing? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have no lessons to take from the Conservatives. What the Conservatives are proposing for the Canadians listening to us is to cut services, cut investments, and cut the future of Canada. We have a plan to help Canadians prosper in the 21st century economy. And what Canadians are realizing is that the Conservatives are too dangerous for our country. Thank you. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, uh, I, I will ignore that member's uh, uh, lack of decorum and his emotionally charged approach to focus on Canadians. Uh, because I can actually take it. I can take the debate and have it out in the open. But Mr. Speaker, you talked about cuts. Canadians are making cuts in their own lives. We now have a new phenomenon in Canada, which is the middle class homeless. We used to just have young people living in their parents' basements. Now we have parents moving into their children's basements. Will the Prime Minister reverse the inflationary policies that doubled housing costs and are forcing seniors to move into their kids' basements just to avoid going homeless? Mr. Speaker, I thank the honourable colleague for the question. Canada has a AAA credit rating, the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7, and low unemployment. And in addition, we will always be there to support the middle class, Mr. Speaker, whether it is six million old age seniors with the old age security benefit, whether it is 11 million Canadians with the grocery rebate, whether it is 4 million Canadians with the business supports. Mr. Speaker, what we do on this side of the House is invest in Canadians to build a stronger economy day after day, year after year, and we will continue on that course. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, incompetent rating agencies mean absolutely nothing to the, quote, unhoused seniors who say that for affordable housing in Metro Vancouver, that, that, that the only thing that turns up is nothing, nothing, and nothing. Nor does it mean anything to, and I quote again, this is even from the CBC, living in his broken down car, homeless man says he has until Thursday to move. We have both nurses and carpenters living in parking lots after eight years of this Prime Minister doubling housing costs. Mm. Will they stop driving up the cost of living so that Canadians can house, feed and heat their families? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
The Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and here's the truth for seniors. Uh, fixing the global inflation problem is not going to be fixed by cutting dental support to 3.5 million seniors, and that's what the Leader of the Opposition would do. On top of that, Mr. Speaker, to get to the tens of billions of dollars of cuts he's talking about, it would mean cuts to our health care system. It would mean making sure, unfortunately, that the investments like we saw in B.C. to transform our health system won't happen. What does that mean, Mr. Speaker? It doesn't mean just poor health outcomes. It means more costs in the future. It means a less resilient country, and it means a much worse future for our seniors. That's what he's peddling, Mr. Speaker. Then I have shifted. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Actually, this government that is promising over $10 billion of cuts right now because they suddenly woke up and realized that they were bankrupt. When we were in office, we actually managed to balance the budget while growing health care spending every single year. In fact, growing it faster than the current government. But today, the biggest threat to the health of Canadians is homelessness. People are losing their ho homes because this Prime Minister has doubled the cost of housing. Will he realize with people living in parking lots that after eight years, he's just not worth the cost? Uh, Mr. Speaker, yeah. unlike the party opposite... No, no, have we don't balance budgets on the backs of Canadians. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, we invest in Canadians. Let me give you one example, Mr. Speaker children out of poverty with the Canada Siles Child Benefit. And every single time there's an opportunity to support Canadians, Mr. Speaker, what does the other side of the House do? They vote against. against. It, that is not the way in which we will build a strong economy. Once again, I'd like to remind members to please conduct themselves in a way that is appropriate. And I'll also ask members to please uh, keep the voices down so the Speaker can hear at least what is going on. If not, the members would ask a question. The Honourable Member, uh, Honourable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the member is right about one thing. They don't balance the budget on the backs of Canadians. They run massive inflationary deficits on the backs of Canadians. <laughs> Position. The Prime Minister investigate allegations. It is of the opposition.